And down the cellars uh, were built uh, from a Spanish family uh, named Otero in 1890. Uh, was then sold in the 20s, 30s, we don't have uh, a lot of information from this time uh, to an Italian family who worked a few harvests on the property and then the building was completely abandoned until 1975, Mr. Weiner bought the property uh, with principal reason on the cellars, you will see when it goes downstairs and well, the first wine was made in 1977 this is the, the old one, so we have been um, 40 years, the company has 40 years, last year, this mm -hmm. will be 41 hours this year. Uh, concerning the wines and grapes, we don't have any of them, we buy all the grapes. Uh, sounds a little bit strange when a winery has not their own vineyard, <coughs> but we have a very particular style of winemaking, uh, wines with a lot of aging, and they need certain basic characteristics from <coughs> the grapes. We have very good harvests, we harvest a lot, and we buy a lot of grapes because you know we can make a lot of good wine and if the harvest is not so good we make small harvests or even jump the year so uh, in the market you will find uh, sometimes wines from Bodega Weinert uh, over two or even three years the same harvest you know, actually Malbec 2006 is the third year we are selling now and there will be a little bit of seven and then we will see but uh, they are coming up several years which don't have haven't been as good so uh, suddenly you are finding you're jumping up two or three years because the quality was not in what we like to have so we jump. Uh, what I am looking for when I go for grapes uh, for the wine style Carascal and up we buy grapes only from Luxembourg. this area the largest distance is about 25 kilometers why we do that is climate earth and old wines, especially Malbec. We have, uh, in this area, we are still, they're pulling out a lot of them, uh, sadly, for building houses, but we still have a nice pool of uh, Malbec Wainak, which are 60 to over 100 years old, and are giving uh, very nice and small berries, because Malbec is a medium grade. Uh, the older the plant, the smaller the berries, better concentration. So this is very important for us to have uh, Malbec berries from old wines. Uh, I'm looking also is um, all the grapes no, don't, don't doesn't uh, matter the, the quality we go for are ungrafted. Always ungrafted. Always ungrafted. Mm, have much more uh, grape typicity, flavors, etc. Um, with ungrafted berries, ungrafted grapes than with grafted grapes. And ungrafted, nothing better than <laughs> getting the real characteristic of each berry. We don't buy any grape grafted. Not oh. Chardonnay, not Sauvignon Blanc, not Tempranillo, not Cab, not Marlowe, not Malbec. We have much more uh, grape uh, characteristic and typicity in the wine. Uh, I always compare it a bit with uh, communication. If I ask you a glass of water, what are you bringing me? Water. Which one? Yeah. Yeah, which one? From the fountain, from spark sparkling, cold, hot, warm, big, small. Okay, these small differences is happening also if you have a grafted wine. The upper part, Malbec, is asking for water. And he's getting water from uh, American root, which is quite growing. So he gets growing hormones, he gets a lot of water, and he gets a few of minerals. And so these small differences, where are they ending? Big glasses and lots of ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're tasting different in the, in the wine. So if you have the possibility, if you go vineyard visiting and you have the possibility to pick grapes from grafted vineyards and ungrafted vineyards, you will see a big difference. Mm -hmm. Berries are bigger on grafted uh, wines or smaller on ungrafted. They have more taste, they have more acidity. There is a difference, and obviously this will end up in differences for the wine. For us, this difference is very important. Irrigation traditionally by flooding, we don't like drop irrigation. We have uh, on drop irrigated wines, you have much more volume of uh, the roots on the 20, 30 centimeters. 
we have two, three or even four meter deep silt soils in this area, like big sponges. So we fill up these sponges with um, the water once in two weeks or three weeks, depending on uh, the, the season. And the grape, the vine is making much more root volume inside the soil. So we have uh, more root volume, which is important for the, the plant, for giving old plants. Mm -hmm. the, the plants are living much more stable. It's like us, when we have good food and drink every day, uh, we live longer than when we have uh, some good food now, and then we have very bad food for a time. So it's the same as for the plant. You have to uh, sure and to have the, the root volume where we have reserves for the plants when you have very hot days, very dry days. Uh, 2005, for example, we had uh, over a week with uh, temperatures over 40 degrees during the day and 30 during the night. Uh, imagine the, the, the water the plant is transpirating. So if you don't have root volume with reserves, uh, we, we can take the water during the night. Um, the plant is uh, evaporating much more water than so where it takes the water from the berries. I have seen uh, grape berries uh, climbing 2% alcohol in, two, in one and a half, two days. You know, with vineyards which drip irrigated and they don't have enough uh, root water. So this is a very important point for us. Then for the higher quality Malbec, also we avoid vineyards with uh, hail netting. Why? Uh, the hail netting, uh, is the, talking about the hail netting on the side, Mm -hmm. uh, it's first reducing a little bit uh, the light and then you have, I don't know if you have seen a wine yard walking through, you can see all these leaves are pushed together, this looks like a wall of leaves. Yeah. Now what happens? The first leaf receives 100% sunlight, the second 30 and the third 3%. Now if you have the berries hidden behind one or two leaves, they don't get enough light. Malbec likes cold soils. Mm -hmm. Silt soils which retain humidity, but it likes sunny light, a lot of light, mm -hmm. and it's also sensitive on botrytis. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have healthier berries and we have better colors, which is very important for us if we are talking about wines aging one, two, three, four, five, ten, or even twenty years in oak, which is our speciality. Mm -hmm. So we have very really specific terms of this. No hand netting on Malbec, cab Molo can accept depending on the management, they're less sensitive. Malbec is sensitive on hail netting, mm -hmm. especially for what we are doing with aged wines. Mm -hmm. uh, if you make very fruity young wines which are drunk between two, three years, there is no problem. But if you age wines as we do for five, ten, or twenty or more years, then it's a very important one. What, what's the problem with the hail nettings? Uh, you're reducing sunlight on the berries. Yeah. Ah, and reducing the <coughs> amount and quality and quantity of the tannins, color, phenols, all this big family. <coughs> and when I started here, I made them experience on winemaking with vineyards who had part with, part with up. And yeah. aging them in the oak cask for <laughs> one, two years, the ones with Oh, with hail nettings were going, starting to go brown while the unnetted still were uh, violet and blue toned. So uh, for our style it is uh, then harvest all by hand and selected in the wine yard. This is why you don't see a selecting table in our grape reception. So grapes are already selected from the wine yard, coming in in 20 kilogram boxes plastic boxes and are destemmed and uh, white steam it directly to the press and red to the fermentation. Uh, grape varieties we are working is 95% between Malbec, Cab and Merlot and then depending the year we do a little bit of this and that. Uh, it means a little bit of Chardonnay sometimes, a little Sauvignon Blanc, a bit of Tempranillo, a bit of uh, we have to experiment with Dana, now we have a Cabernet Franc uh, for this uh, these two years to sell. So this is a little bit what makes it fun. Um, there are uh, very clear studies. If you have uh, hail netting, the, inverse, the, the money you have to put investment on the, the, the stronger buyers uh, you have to place, the, the, the work you have to do, then you have additional work to do because you have to 
top up for pruning, you have down for protecting, you have for treatments, for spraying, you have to put up or down, uh, you have uh, damage on the, the nettings, so there's quite a big cost. Uh, now in this area here we have um, average a full loss of harvest each 15 years. Uh, this is less or more the same uh, time uh, your hail nettings will live because the sunlight is burning them out so you have to renew investments, extra costs etc. So at the end it's less or more the same. Yeah. But even if you have hail nets, the quality, if you have a hail damage, uh, they are not covering completely your plant. Uh, they are damaging the upper part of the leaves. What happens if you have this uh, short time before the harvest, uh, the plant is producing uh, growing hormones for one side and B, uh, hormones to defend itself against the penetration of fungus, bacteria, etc. Uh, these both hormones are quite uh, greeny bitter and obviously they will end up also in the grapes, so the grape quality is going down. So if you, have so if you make it's... wines which are fruity, fresh and a lot of oak chips inside and to drink soon, doesn't really matter, but uh, to bring these wines in an aging process where we are looking for, for fine uh, aged tannins from the grape skin and then you have suddenly this creamy taste between is not very good. Talking about temperature, we are looking for our aging wines we are not looking for a lot of pushy fruit flavors why not because these fruit flavors reach uh, when you're working uh, lower temperature fermentation are mostly esters which are combinations of alcohols and, and acids they're very fruity very nice but they're very sensitive on oxidation so um, producing uh, this kind of flavors and then putting them to age in an old cask for three, four years with a lot of oxygen doesn't make a lot of sense. So we are ferment fermenting at higher temperatures and searching for uh, heavier flavors which are less intense in the, the nose, but they bring much more uh, bouquet flavors, much more complex flavors. This is very European classic. Our winemaking philosophy is built up on classic Bordeaux winemaking with adaptation on the characteristics from, from the, the grapes from the area and especially on Malbec, of course. Wine making is, um, as I said, very classic. We don't make macerations. Grapes are, after destemming, coming to the, coming to the uh, fermentation vat. Yeast is added and sulfides, and then we have uh, alcoholic fermentation in contact with the skin for, depending on the grape and year, between five, nine, ten days is already sure very long and still with some uh, residual sugar we go to the press and the wine is fermenting without con skin contact in the central cellar in another week a uh, few days then we take out sediments wine is going to complete full concrete bath making malolactic fermentation which is very important to bring down the uh, malic acid uh, which is quite intense with the tannins so we have smoother uh, sensation of tannins because of the change of acids also and also helps to stabilize because it's, the bacteria are consuming some rest of sugars etc which help to stabilize the wine in time also and these wines are staying during the winter on, in the concrete vats on the fine yeast and also with the lower temperatures tartarics are falling out but then during spring wines are being selected and depending quality uh, after filtering uh, to take away sediments and factories, yeast, etc., to the aging process in the oak cask. So, this is one of the important points uh, a difference between oak casks and barrels that you get in the oak cask, you get uh, go, you are going with clean wine after the winter, stabilized wine, and in the barrels, you go with dirty wine with bacteria, yeast, and you do malolactic, uh, sometimes even in the barrel. And then you have to change the barrel to get cleaning the wine, etc. And, uh, in the oak cask, the wine is going clean and stays in the same cask for a year, two, or more. Okay. Um, United States, of course, we are very present since 40 years. 
mm -hmm. and Sweden looking also to, to get there. Our biggest market is Norway. <laughs> it's big. no. Our biggest Norway. market is Norway. Really? We sell a quarter of our production to Norway. Norway. Really? Yeah. So how did that start? Why, why Norway? Why Norway? <laughs> <laughs> As you said, we have a good importer. But, um, uh, one of our wines, Karaskal, you will, will taste now in the cellar together. Uh, seems that it fits very well with Norwegian food. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And I don't understand why we are not yet able to enter in Sweden and Finland because there's, you are different in certain things, but it's all the Nordic food with some berries and acidity and mushrooms and other meats. So. But this is quite a rare place in Argentina. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very rare. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Here, 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 here. Oh. 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 Ah, you must be on that